All right. Looks like I was muted. Uh, having problems with controls this morning, but uh, we'll join. We'll get uh, give everybody a couple of minutes to, to join us, and we'll get started. Thank you. It's 10.01. I think we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us uh, it, it, for this uh, Connecting Michigan Communities webinar. Uh, today, we're going to take a, a few moments and talk about the emergency broadband benefit. Uh, certainly, I encourage you to ask questions using the Q&A box, um, or you can you know, send something over in chat. Uh, Ms. Joyce, I appreciate you letting me know I was on mute there a minute ago. Uh, I do hope today can be a, a little bit interactive. Uh, it's probably not going to be uh, one of our longer uh, webinars that we've had, uh, but uh, we thought it was pertinent to ensure that we had talked about it a little bit more, um, in particular with some deadlines uh, coming up or some opportunities coming up with the program. So with that, uh, we'll dive right in and, and get started talking about the Emergency Broadband Benefit Program. Uh, should see on your screen now, uh, this is a, a, a an image uh, or document that was created uh, by Connected Nation and just provides some highlights on the program itself. Um, a few key things to keep in mind is that the program will provide up to $50 a month for uh, internet service and associated equipment for a consumer who is eligible. Uh, this could expand as much to $75 per month uh, for those areas in tribal lands. And it also has provisions for uh, the uh, up to a one-time $100 uh, discount on laptop, tablet, or desktop computers uh, with those providers who uh, offer those service or offer those uh, to their consumer. Um, we'll dig into the eligibility a little bit more, but but wanted to put this up here, uh, make it a little bit easier for everyone to see. And there's certainly this this. Uh, PowerPoint will be out there for folks, and uh, there are several resources in here that I would point you to, um, you know, through the FCC and, the, and USAC uh, throughout this webinar. So for consumers, uh, the, the first thing consumers need to know is that they can go to the getemergencybroadband.org website. Uh, that is a site being hosted by USAC, and, and that is where they can help uh, identify and determine if they qualify. Um, how to apply, and then the companies that are near them that, that are offering services or off, who are uh, part of this uh, program. Uh, one big thing to keep in note for a consumer as well as for providers and just all of us in general uh, as we talk about the emergency broadband benefit is that this program will end when the one of two things happen, when the funds run out or six months after the Department of Health and Human Services declares the end of the COVID-19 health emergency. So whichever one of those uh, comes first, uh, that will be the end of this program. And so those are a couple of things to keep in mind. As far as uh, trying to qualify or becoming qualified for the program as a consumer, uh, there are a handful of things, and this is certainly not an exhaustive list, uh, but 135% of the federal poverty guideline um, so if a household is eligible uh, under that, that, that would make them uh, qualify. Um, if they have a child or dependent who's on the free and reduced lunch program, um, they may already receive lifeline benefits. Uh, if you're receiving SNAP, Medicaid, or other uh, similar programs, uh, there's also those who may have experienced a significant loss uh, of income over the past year, and that means essentially for someone who's single, uh, they're making less than 99,000 or for a dual income, $198,000, uh, but you'd have to prove uh, the income as well as the uh, loss of a job or being furloughed. 
Uh, so those would be the requirements uh, and the necessary paperwork essentially for uh, becoming qualified under that. Uh, as far as how to apply, there are three different ways to apply. It can be done online. Uh, there's actually a mail-in application that can be sent in. Uh, or you can actually reach out to a provider and tell them that you want to uh, subscribe through this program and you can go that route. Uh, you, you know, though, as far as the way this is supposed to go, uh, you would apply, then you would submit that, you know, you'd submit the application and then you would enroll with the provider once you've received your, uh, you know, information that you're approved. Um, the, as I mentioned earlier, as far as key dates, uh, May 12th, so tomorrow is a big day. And that is the first day that applications are to be received. And, and so for consumers that, you know, it's a great opportunity now for those of us who are trying to put more information out there for providers to uh, let con consumers know that this is available. Uh, tomorrow's a big day. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see the kind of uh, enrollment that happens on the program, uh, but that starts tomorrow, May 12th. And so we should be watching for uh, applications to start rolling in uh, at, at USAC. And again, you can you can do that through the getemergencybroadband.org page. And that page looks just like this. So when you go there, um, again, they, they walk you through the opportunity. Do I qualify? How to apply? Um, companies near me. And all of that information is available from their site. Um, and, and through links, you can click on, you know, going through and determining eligibility. Um, and then you can go in and do the application um, from the site as well. So we've got a question. Um, if you had a significant loss of income during the pandemic, even if you're about uh, above 135% of poverty, you could qualify. Um, I believe that is correct, so long as uh, you would meet that 99,000 or 198,000 for you know dual income household, and that you have proof of the income as well as the loss of the job or the furlough. Um, again, that's that is my current understanding of that. Uh, are there any asset tests? I don't know that I am, am following that question. Uh, Jim, if you want to provide a little more information there, I may not, I may just not be following you there. So for providers, um, a couple of things that providers need to kind of be aware of and, and just generally as, a, as, as the public and, and those who are advocating, um, there were a couple of things that providers needed to do. Um, they need FCC approval to file and file with the USAC, uh, which are, are two different things that needed to be done. If a provider is already an ETC, uh, an eligible telecommunications uh, provider, then they did not need approval from the FCC. They just needed to file through USAC. Um, but all other providers had to apply for approval from the FCC. And that's a process that took place from uh, March 8th through the 22nd, or at least that was the primary and initial uh, application phase. Um, however, the FCC is doing approvals on a rolling basis um, post the 22nd of March. Um, so, it, you know, while hopefully providers have already done this if they want to, um, it doesn't mean that they don't still have the opportunity to opportunity to become a provider um, under the emergency broadband benefit program. All right. So um, as of Friday afternoon, this is the list of providers um, provided by the FCC. Uh, I've got the link there at the bottom uh, of the page. Um, this was the list of providers who are offering EBB in the state of Michigan. Um, pretty, pretty sizable list of providers. Uh, some of these providers are obviously uh, wireless, some are fixed broadband providers. And then um, if you go to that site, you'll you'll get the full list. You'll it tells you what type of service they're offering, uh, and then it also tells you if they are participating in the um, in the device, the hundred dollar device uh, project as well. So the question came in: Is there a one page flyer that can be shared with our families? Uh, there is an entire toolkit, and we will uh, as we're walking through this, I will just take us to this page. So for advocates, so for providers, for the general public, 
um, for our community leaders who are trying to put information out there about the opportunity that, that, that exists for our communities. Um, this is really the, the where you need to spend time. And so this is the broadband, if you go to FCC.gov backslash broadband benefit, um, there is an entire outreach toolkit there. Um, there are infographics and newsletters and, and social media, you know, uh, example, social media posts, flyers. Uh, there's an entire PowerPoint. I, I could have just used their PowerPoint today. Um, it, it would have been, uh, you know, it, although that's the, that's would have been easy to do. Um, I certainly encourage you to spend time with that page. There's a lot of material there that you can put into the community. Um, and, 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 you know, uh, kudos to the FCC for all the work that they've put into uh, making this a successful program. Um, so a couple questions here. How do you join that list? I am a provider of cell, Comcast and HughesNet. Um, you will need to go to the, uh, you can actually start with this FCC broadband or FCC.gov broadband benefit page. Um, and there are links there for providers to uh, reach, you know, to go through the process of becoming eligible. Uh, another question here, and I apologize, trying to, work through different uh, screens here. Uh, will you discuss what a school district or library should do if they have been providing residential internet service to needy students or patrons? The FCC has told us that EBV discounts can be provided on these bulk subscriptions, but there has no public information released on how this would work. Ah, uh, that's a really, really good question. I'm, I'm not sure uh, of that. Um, Winston, I, I will have to follow up on that. I know that one of the, of the ways that you can be eligible is if a provider offers a, you know, a low, low income product uh, that that could potentially make you automatically eligible for uh, the EBB, but I'm not sure what kind of um, interaction uh, they're talking about with uh, as far as providing residential internet service through the schools. Um, so I'd have to follow up on that. Uh, so, so a comment here, sometimes with benefit programs, there are pretty strict asset limits as well as income limits. Uh, I understand, you know, um, as it reads, uh, it should be strictly on income and, uh, you know, your eligibility should be based on income and your, and or your eligibility of other federal programs. Um, I am not aware of any, uh, restrictions based on assets. So uh, a, a note here from David Allen, Midwest Energy just got approved in Michigan as part of that, uh, that they've, they have to have had to register associates that will be signing folks up. Is there anything else we need to do? Uh, I am not aware of that. Uh, again, that would be an FCC question, uh, but, and, and I apologize if, if you're signed up and I didn't have you in that list, uh, it, it, this was pulled on Friday afternoon. Um, and, and I can't say that, you know, how often that is being updated or when that's being updated. Uh, so if, if you're a provider and you're on today and you're not in this list, I, I my apologies. Uh, it just simply wasn't, had not been updated on the FCC's page whenever I grabbed this information. So again, back into what can we do as advocates, uh, lots of opportunities. To, to put information out here, the FCC has put a wealth of, of information out for our use to, to help advocate in our communities. I, I think it's great for our school districts and, and just our general community leadership uh, to do what we can to put information out there about this program. Again, we're not really sure how long this program is going to last. Um, I've heard a lot of uh, folks say that they believe that it will be um, that the program will end because of funding before it ends based on the time frames. Uh, but, but there's also conversation about additional ways to fund or keep a similar program funded into the future. Uh, again, those are just unknowns at this point. Uh, and so I, it is our hope and our desire that, that our communities across the state would be leveraging this um, to the extent possible to help pay for uh, services. So, you know, with Connected Nation Michigan, you'll often hear us talk access, adoption, and use. We talk a lot about access. Access is absolutely important. Um, but as I've heard people say, 
if I have a gigabit network and I can't afford it, I might as well have nothing. Um, and so to the extent that, you know, adoption and use are being restricted because of an inability to pay for these services, uh, this certainly can open the door for a lot of people who just simply don't have the means uh, to pay for these services uh, and, and really make, make the digital, close the digital divide um, through these means. Not seeing any other questions at the moment, and I'm just going to flip over. Like I said, was, I anticipate this being a much shorter webinar today, but we thought it were pertinent with uh, the application uh, opening up tomorrow to, to spend time talking about this today. Uh, certainly, if there are other questions, um, please feel free to post those. Try to answer those here in the next couple of minutes. If there's not any other questions, I'm going to let you all go very early today. Oh, here's one more. Um, could I show the first couple of slides again? I will be happy to do that. Slides, the first couple of things here. Um, first here, this just is kind of a, a general summary of the, the program itself. Uh, again, it's important to make note that tomorrow is the uh, opening date for applications. And again, those applications can be uh, sent in three different ways. You can do it online. It, there's a paper application that can be sent to a PO box and or you can reach out to your pro local providers uh, who may be participating in the program. Um, if you go uh, get emergencybroadband.org, uh, you can check on how to qualify. Uh, there are some tools there to use. Um, the opportunity to uh, apply should be available tomorrow. And then you can also review the companies that are near your current location that may be offering services. Um, any idea on the turnaround time from application to acceptance? Uh, reading through the materials that have been made available, uh, it looks like that could be almost instantaneous. Uh, but I also know that if there are questions, uh, particularly if it comes down to um, you know, proof of income or the proof of a change in income, uh, I certainly would expect that to be longer. And, and certainly, um, you know, I, my guess would be that uh, if, if we see a lot of applications coming in, that could start to stretch out the uh, amount of time uh, that, that exists in between um, putting your application in and being accepted or, or approved. Uh, question here, in areas that currently have no service, would a hotspot uh, be funded? Uh, there are certainly a number of wireless-based companies who are offering uh, services. And so I would expect that some of those are offering through a, a Wi-Fi style, um, you know, a Wi-Fi style of service, uh, or I uh, apologize, a uh, utilizing a hotspot for for services, although um, each each provider is is you know essentially determining what type of service they'll be offering. Uh, the the PDF of the presentation will absolutely be available. I would, however, um, really point you all towards uh, you know going to the FCC.gov broadband benefit page. Um, from that page, you can gain access to the Emergency Broadband Benefit Outreach Toolkit. If you're trying to share this information locally, um, th that's directly from the FCC and provides a tremendous amount of information. Um, you'll note that there are, uh, you know, there's uh, consumer handouts. Uh, they're in both um, English and Spanish versions. Uh, a lot of really, ha really handy information there um, and, and lots of different ways that you can share this information with your community. Um, a big question about how to market this information. Uh, word of mouth, radio ads. Uh, yeah, there's there's a ton of uh, ways to go about this um, and ways to advocate at the local level. Um, I think you know an opportunity if you've got local radio stations that'll give you a few seconds to to make note of of the emergency broadband benefit. I think that's a great thing to do. 
Um, I also think that it's going to be worth us monitoring closely kind of how enrollment goes over the next few days um, and, and how it begins to, um, I guess, tick against the uh, uh, total funds that are available for the program. And so, you know, as, as that program starts to be subscribed to and we see those, you know, the, the projections on, on how long that program should be available, I think that'll be helpful as well. But certainly, uh, I don't think there's, there's any way to um, over uh, promote at this point um, the need for, for folks to be able to utilize these programs. And, and it's out there, um, even if it's short term, uh, it'll be there. Uh, one thing of note that, that I haven't seen a question on and I failed to put in the, the PowerPoint is that as this program ends, um, the providers will provide information to the, uh, to the subscriber and the subscriber will have the opportunity to either opt in or to um, essentially uh, you know, final or, or quit their service uh, as either the funds end or we kind of roll out that six month post DHHS uh, determination. And so that is something to keep it, keep in mind is that it is not an indefinite program. Um, it is short term and that there will be, you know, a, a time and place where providers will have to either work with the, with, with the consumer um, to maybe transition into a different program if that exists um, transition them into a, a, a regular um, uh, subscriber account or to cancel that subscription at some point. Uh, the question was, is the funding allocated by state? And this is a federal, like a fully federal program. Um, any, you know, so if, if one state subscribes more than the other, that's the way that the program will work. But there are certainly conversation um, floating to the top about the need for uh, continued and sustainable um, programs, whether it be this one or something similar to this uh, moving forward. Uh, I, I believe that the emergency broadband benefit program will give us a really good pilot for how a uh, program like this can work uh, and, and how how well it works even for the provider community. Um, it'll be, you know, we'll, we're going to learn a lot in the next few weeks, I'm sure, about the way that this works um, and its ability to, to continue to be a long-term type of project. Um, and, we'll, and for that matter, what kinds of changes may need to be made? I think I've answered most of the questions that have come up. Um, if there's anything else, we'll give it another minute or two here. Uh, certainly appreciate everybody joining us. Uh, like I said, I, I just wanted to ensure that that we talked through the emergency broadband benefit. We've talked about it a little bit in a few of our past webinars, um, but with tomorrow being the opening for the applications, uh, it was a good opportunity for us to put this information out there. There are a plethora of additional federal programs coming along, uh, and, and I anticipate that we'll uh, we'll be highlighting those in the future, the near future, uh, especially as more and more of that information becomes available. Um, some of the bigger or some of the larger funded programs, uh, information started becoming more clear on those yesterday. And so as we as we feel more confident in understanding exactly how those programs are going to play out, how they impact, impact our local communities, um, state and even federal, uh, we'll, we'll ensure to bring those to you all. Uh, I also make note that we will likely begin um, over the next week or over the next month or so here, we're gonna start uh, kind of moving out the timeline on how often we're having these webinars. Uh, we've been doing these bi-weekly over the past, uh, gosh, six, seven, eight months here now. And so um, probably gonna push those out a little bit beyond the bi-weekly, maybe even uh, as, you know, maybe a monthly, um, but certainly uh, as, as the need comes for us to bring additional or new information to you all, we'll be doing that. Um, but we know that everybody is uh, probably a little bit overwhelmed by all the webinars that are out there. And we want to ensure that when we're bringing you uh, information and it's of, of the highest quality and really is pertinent to the time. I have not seen any additional questions, so I have left my contact information up there. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have additional questions that I can try to answer. Uh, we'll get these uh, this PowerPoint posted as well as a recording of this uh, up uh, within the next few days here and send it out. And again, I would encourage you to spend time with the FCC's Emergency Broadband Benefit page. 
Uh, there's a lot of information there, particularly if you're looking to expand or extend your uh, this information into your community. With that, we'll, we'll end. We hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.